Amazon uh, uh, Graviton 3. Wow, what a uh, um, what a legacy of first party silicon that right. Amazon has been bringing to the table. So first off, uh, Amazon is is a embracer of heterogeneous computing. I mean, not only do they create their own technology with Graviton, Inferentia, Tranium, and also the silicon uh, that that goes into um, their uh, into Nitro. But they also, of course, work with uh, Intel, AMD, and uh, NVIDIA. So they're kind of an, an, an equal access. And oh, by the way, they're the largest consumer uh, in the public cloud of, of, these, uh, of these resources as well. So uh, they're big. So uh, Graviton uh, kicked off a few years back. They followed up with Graviton 2. And now we, we are here with uh with graviton 3. so what does it bring to the table i mean it brings higher performance and it brings uh lower power which is exactly what you want uh in in semiconductors uh they're using uh the full up uh neoverse uh core as their base core and they've really beefed up their memory subsystem with ddr5 and they've also uh beefed up support for ai with uh, what's called bfloat 16 which um, uh, I think you know provides a order of magnitude uh, improvement uh, in in terms of of performance. How hard is it to to move over your workloads? Um, it's a mouse click uh, from your current Intel or AMD workloads or Graviton One or Graviton Three. The cool part about this, uh, I think, the coolest part about this is that it opened up. Uh, it opened up Graviton to every application that you would want uh, to run. And one of the things I do appreciate uh, with what the company has done with Graviton is they're very conservative uh, about it, right? In Graviton 1, they had maybe, maybe four or five uh, applications or workloads that they recommended. Uh, Graviton 2, it went to around uh, 10 to 15. And with Graviton 3, it's it's actually it's actually uh, endless. I mean, I'm sure there are some I'm sure there's some applications that um, that it can't run or it's not optimal to run, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. And the second thing that I thought was impressive was the how easy it is. I mean, if you have a cloud native natively written app um, within an IDE, you don't have to make any changes. Uh, well, or minimal changes. Uh, the company, uh, uh, in fact, last year, Dave Brown from AWS kicked off the Graviton Challenge at, at our event, which uh, was really uh, the idea of focusing in on how, really to demonstrate how easy it was to uh, port uh, applications over. Uh, the only recompile you need is for like a, a C Sharp or a, a C++ uh, application. But if, if it's a modern uh, cloud app, it's it, it's minimal. So, Daniel, good stuff. Yeah, I think the continued evolution, higher performance, more efficiency, uh, you know, more dynamic uh, offerings, you know, different sizes and options, you know, for how many cores and CPUs that it offers. I think that's going to all be really important. You got, you know, improved floating points. You got improve ML performance, which is something that Amazon's really, you know, trying to lean into with AWS. And of course, wants to make sure it puts its stake in the ground that it's, um, you know, it's got leadership there. That's one of those things where sometimes people say, hey, Google's got that that side of the house uh, nailed down. Well, AWS wants to raise its hand and say, we're doing, you know, we're doing good work here. And by the way, you and I will be at Remars doing some uh, video, which is the big AWS event focused on ML and uh, their AI business. So you'll hear more from us about that really soon. Um, the only thing I'll add is, you know, we really are at this interesting inflection point for ARM-based instances in the uh, in the public cloud. You know, we AWS was early; it was first. It had made some really smart investments. Uh, it has it got these into market first, but you know, we're seeing now announcements coming from Azure. You're, you're going to see it coming from all the rest of the public cloud players. They're going to build on ARM. Easier it's made to move those cloud native workloads, and then you're seeing technologies being. Uh, you know, developed in the DevOps space to make it easier to deploy um, workloads that aren't necessarily as as, as native for uh, the you know for certain uh, cloud um, 
to be easier. And that's going to be an interesting transformation to see will that happen. Because right now, that's been what's slowed down a lot of migrations is, you know, the refactoring. So we, we know ARM is going to present a great challenge for x86. We know x86 wants to keep innovating. And Pat Gelsinger is continuing to push that leadership story. So is Lisa Sue. So um, I love watching this because, like I said, in the end, the customer wins. So that's what I'll say because you, you hit most of the good uh, <laughs> Graviton 3 talking points. Yeah, it's great. Um, so I, I, put, uh, I wrote an article on, on Mars. I interviewed uh, their CMO, uh, AWS CMO, and also uh, head of uh, – uh, data and, and, and AI, and, and we talk about uh, ReMars and, you know, what does Mars stand for? <laughs> Machine learning, AI, robotics, and space, baby. I can't think of uh, four cooler uh, topic, nerdy nerdy topics to uh, get in there. Not just nerdy, but heck, space is just, you know, and Elon Musk has really driven the biggest change um, uh, behind people and how they view uh, space. So uh, super cool. Daniel, let's hop to the next topic here, uh, which is, oh, did you want to do a boomerang on that one? No, I was just going to say, do we tell everybody we're going to be broadcasting from the Blue Origin? Oh, I thought you did. Oh, no, but, uh, yeah, no, 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 it's great. No, that was part of the deal. We'll do some videos, but it has to be inside of a rocket ship, at least uh, breaking the stratosphere. So, What does Daniel Tosh say? That's a true story I made up. <laughs> it's true. No, I like that. I like that. 